In a previous lecture, we looked at vectors in the electrical axis and how impulse are generated. And now we want to look at how those impulses are actually detected, how they're sensed. So how is that electrical activity that's produced by each impulse detected? And what we have in order to do that are electrodes. And so you can think of these electrodes as those that sense electrical activity. Okay, so they're the ones that sense electrical activity. And that's how you should think of them. And when we look at the standard 12 lead EKG, there are 10 electrodes, okay? There's four on the limbs that we use, and then there's the six precordial ones, okay? And that gives you a total of 12 standard leads that you detect on the EKG, okay? So 10 electrodes then give us the 12 lead ECG, okay? And what you want to essentially think of these electrodes as are cameras, okay? So imagine this is your heart here, Okay, this would be your right atrium, your left atrium, your right ventricle and left ventricle. And we're saying that you have this impulse that's directed here in this direction, leftward, okay, and then downward. Okay, this would be up and then this would be rightward. And so it's going leftward and downward or inferiorly. And you have that impulse. And notice that you have this electrode here that's detecting it. Okay. And notice that there's all these red dots all around. Imagine these all as electrodes and cameras that are detecting the electrical activity in different positions. Okay. So if you imagine you're taking a picture of something, well, if you're looking at it in one direction, you may see one image. However, if you're looking at it a different direction, you may see something else. And these cameras provide a 3D image of of the heart's electrical activity, okay? And that's essentially what an EKG is. So you have 12 leads and they're all detecting electrical activity of the heart in different directions, okay? So let's look at an example. So we're saying that we have this blue impulse that's being detected by this, but it's also being seen by those around it, okay? But it's seeing that impulse in a different way. So now we have this impulse that I've put in this area here. And notice this is a positive, let's call it maybe a ventricular depolarization wave. So you have a positive impulse heading in this direction, meaning this is the positive end of it, and this would be the negative end, okay? And then we have also electrodes. So here's one electrode, here's another electrode, and one here, okay? You can imagine it being this one here, this one there, and then this one behind it, okay? So imagine we have something like that. And then what we have up here is what the leads are actually demonstrating, okay? So you have this impulse here, this would be one, this would be two, and this would be three, okay? And this is what they would say, this is E1, this is E2, and this is E3 based on what it's seeing, okay? So those electrodes are actually the ones that are giving us what we see on and the leads, okay? So you have this impulse going from left to right, and as it approaches, we'll say E3, okay, we are going to see a positive wave, a positive deflection, meaning above baseline. So imagine you have this baseline here, and it's going to give you a positive deflection above it because that impulse is going towards that electrode, and so that lead will show a positive deflection, okay? So think of towards, okay? If it's going towards, you're going to see a positive deflection. All right. Now notice that the impulse is going also away from this E1 that we've labeled. And if it's going away from an electrode, you'll see a negative complex. Okay. And that's why this one is below baseline and we see a negative deflection. Now, what if you have something that is perpendicular to it, such as what we see here in E2? So E2, we would say something that is perpendicular so you have an impulse moving perpendicular. As a result, you'll get what's called an isoelectric deflection, okay? So notice the one that we have here. You have, as the impulse is moving towards E2, you see this positive deflection. And as it moves away from E2, you get this negative deflection, okay? So hopefully that principle makes sense. So when you think of it, if you have a electrical activity moving towards an electrode, you'll see a positive deflection in that corresponding lead. And as it moves away from an electrode, what you'll see in the lead is a negative deflection, okay? So Hopefully that makes sense. You can imagine when we start looking at this, this would be lead AVR maybe in this direction. Say this is lead two, and maybe you call this one AVL, okay? So what we were saying is that, say AVL is this one here, where you're seeing that isoelectric one, the, that biphasic, where you have the positive negative deflection, and then maybe this is 
lead to, okay, as the impulse is heading in that direction. So you see a positive flexion. And then as it moves away, we'll say from, say, AVR, you see a negative deflection, okay? And that's pretty much the main principles of this. So just to recap, electric electrodes are those that sense electrical activity. Remember, when we use the EKG, that's what we're using. We're detecting the electrical activity of the heart. And with the standard 12 lead EKG, there's 10 electrodes, there's four limb, and then six precordial that monitor the 12 leads. And think of those 12, these electrodes as cameras. They provide a 3D image of the heart's electrical activity, all giving us an idea of areas or regions that may be involved in underlying pathology. They can help us detect rhythms, and you'll see the importance of this as we move on. Now, the EKG detects these positive impulses moving, okay? We said this impulse that we're seeing is moving from left to right. If, as it moves towards an electrode, we see a positive deflection. As it moves away, we see a negative deflection. And if it's moving perpendicular, you get what we said is an isoelectric or biphasic, where we said as it moves towards, we get a positive upright deflection. And then as it moves away, you get that negative deflection. So hopefully that makes sense. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. So I'm so excited to share with you guys this new course that we made available, okay? This is a comprehensive course that we use now for training our technicians here at Mayo Clinic as well as uh, for those that are trying to use and build a foundation, okay? It's the most comprehensive course I've seen out there, and this is something now we're offering to you. Okay, so what does this course include? Well, this is a full color 175 page book. Okay, you can see that here. There's two formats actually. Here's one and here's that. One is the full size and this is the pocket version. You also get online videos. So as you can see here, there's a whole uh, consortium of videos that is continuously updated and added to. We have some lessons. So this is kind of what the uh, lessons look like. Here's atrial fibrillation as an example. And what happens is within this book, so every page in the book, so imagine you open to page 57 and that's atrial fibrillation. Well, you have a corresponding video and lesson with that. Okay. And not only do you have that, then you have questions that corresponding to it. There's over 750 practice questions that go with every single topic in lecture and page in the book. Okay. You also get clinical cases where we approach EKG. So if you're actually handed an EKG, how do you approach it? Okay. And how does it work in the clinical context? And that is discussed there as well. Okay. So that's always new cases that we're adding and uh, you'll get as well. There's also an ECG coding reference guide that we've put together. Okay. So how we code EKGs is based on uh, different codes. And I discussed how uh, you have actually a reference guide, which is this one here that we've put together. And then there's also corresponding videos with that as well, okay? And there's also calipers, so you can see here that go along with that. So you can get all of this here. And how you get to that is go to the www.ekg.md, click on the course here, okay? And then from there, you can check it out. You can see more of the contents there. You can look at one of our uh, videos as a sample and what's actually involved and what they look like so you can get a good understanding. Um, I'm giving you also 25% off. I'm not sure how long that will last, but you can use that to uh, on checkout as well. Okay. Now, if you want more practice questions and you want to join our community, if you can find us on Facebook, just simply search the EKG guy. Okay. There's over 750,000 of us there that are always trying to learn and grow from each other. So check that out. Uh, we'd love for you to be a part of the community and just grow together and learn with us as we do so. Okay. Well, that's all I have for today. I hope you have a wonderful day.